talking about triage in the sense of uh, defense. Um, we're, we're talking from a how do I uh, quickly determine that a, you know, what I'm looking at is bad if we don't know yet, um, and, and b, um, how, what, what information do I need from this right away in terms of, um, at least from the, the defense perspective. Um, when when we talk in terms of triage, the quicker that you can get that information, the better. If there's an active infection on your network, if you're if you detected something um, based off of previous analysis, and your detection wasn't just a you know something was attempted, but oh no, something is actually like beaconing out and is on our network. Um, that is beaconing out, and that is on your network. And if you're handed malware, and somebody goes, you know figure out how we can successfully clean this off of the system rather than just block it. Um, or how do we get a handle on the entire infection because we know that just because we got this one alert, that doesn't mean that that's all that's there. Um, they want that information like yesterday. Um, and how do you set yourself up so that you can do something like that quickly? Um, that is part of your triage. Yeah. Um, for what it's worth, it was a good talk at this year, Shibu Khan, about persistence techniques. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, presenter's uh, kind of overall theme was give up, reformat, reinstall. Do not, you know, particularly advanced adversaries will figure out obscure ways to persist that uh, are very, very hard to defeat. That presenter was completely misguided, and six out of the eight techniques that they talked about and said were completely undetectable are detectable. Disagree with the, the the premise on that one. Um, there, yeah, it's it is a fight worth fighting. Don't just give up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but even so, so having said that, even if we assume that uh, the folks that you're supporting, when they um, find something that they do their cleanup measures are just imaging. That doesn't mean that that is the, that's what you do as soon as you detect something. Um, especially as you, you, your detection mechanisms start to, to um, jump on across that um, or, or come across up to the line of um, no shit, something happened versus mm, this is kind of suspicious, we need to look into it. Um, more and more, what ends up happening is you create the, mm, this is suspicious, we need to look into it, because that's how you detect new things, and not just the thing that everybody's already seen. And when you get the, this is suspicious, we need to look into it, um, then that's when you, you do your triage mechanism to, okay, let's try to quickly determine, is there actually you know, something there? Um, and that's when, when we get into these um, these attributes of triage that we want it to be to be scriptable um, and, and uh, like I was saying, consume minimal time and, and resources, especially analyst time and resources, um, and um, logged um, or another way of, of saying that is searchable 
um, those results you want to be able to leverage to um, say, okay, this wasn't something, still log that and have it as searchable and mark that as, hey, this wasn't something, so that if you get something further down the line, uh, even though, oh, this looks exactly like you know, what happened before and we determined that it wasn't anything, or, and I haven't seen this happen, um, oh, hey, look, we got something and it is something and, oh, it looks like something that we didn't think was anything before and you look into that old thing and you go, oops, that was something. What sort of um, uh, database, well, in, in terms of logging, what's a good way to do this? Just maybe have a, a wiki for each thing that the human looks at? Or? It, it depends on the size of your team, the um, resources, the technical capabilities. Um, that, that is, a, is a lovely security engineering uh, question there where the devil is totally in the detail. Having said that, um, Google Appliance and throw it into that so that at least your, what, your notes are searchable. I mean, that's kind of like the bare bones, bare bones approach. I mean, it, Google Appliance, you know, if you want to buy that. Buy that. Um, or the, the Lucene Solar stuff, if you want to go the open source route. I mean, just, just so that you can at least search through your stuff. I mean, throw it on a file share, grab it. I mean, it, bare minimum there. Um, or anything up to, uh, we have this fabulous system that we've de been developing for years that helps us with correlation and such and such. Basically, you're talking about any full text index or Yeah, I mean that. I, I would say um, something that just does a, a preform text um, index searchable um, would be your very basic. If you're working in a security operations center, um, you want that. From what it's Frank, I think this is an area of more of solutions that you or other seasoned malware analysts can share mm -hmm. uh, that can apply to other minor sponsors. That would be really helpful to a lot of our sponsors. No idea where to start in this area. In a lot of cases, they only have like a dude, you know, doing our analysis. Right. Okay. So, in terms of reverse engineering of malware or, or malware analysis in general, some of the common tasks for core triage are going to be um, kind of your basic static stuff, file hashes, um, start getting into, oops, start getting into the fuzzy hashes with SSD. Uh, I didn't add it on there, but it's worth mentioning there was a paper a few years ago, author of a tool called SD hash, that is another fuzzy hashing tool. I haven't looked into it too much myself because we're doing okay with the SSD, but the paper that the SD hash author released was specifically comparing SD hash with SSD, and for specific file types, your uh, Microsoft Office file types, your pretty much documents, uh, PDF documents, for those things, SD hash seemed to do a little bit uh, better in terms of correlating things that were similar. Um, any questions? So when you generate uh, hashes, MD5s and SHA-1s are pretty easy to index and search because they're static. Mm -hmm. SSD has its own comparator function that gives you a score, but it's mm -hmm. hard to directly compare the values that come out of SSD to be able to generate two, you know, take two random hash values to generate a score. You have to do that every time you search as opposed to being able to calculate that. I find that to be a problem. Um. Well, there's so that's that's kind of a how do you how do you search question, and there's um, research and, and okay. stuff into that 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 is a solvable problem. Okay, Let me just put it that way. Um, yeah, that is a solvable problem. One of the things I'll say just from a let's, let's talk bare bones again. 
closely asking, um, why, why did we start using SSDs? Because when one person pulls a uh, PE file off of a carpet, off of a disk from a forensic image, one person pulls it out of uh, packet capture um, in one, using one method, another person pulls it out of packet capture using a different method. Maybe they missed some bytes at the end. Maybe got a few extra zeros at the end. Totally throws off your MD5, your SHA-1 hashes. SSD will say, oh, these are 98, 99%, 100% similar in the case where it's just some null bytes at the end. Um, that, that was like kind of a, a, an immediate uh, a duh moment for why we uh, should start using SSD. Um, there are different ways of getting the malware. I don't think that what you get um, is, is, there is only one way of getting that. Um, keep in mind that it can be coming from all these different sources and just because the MP5s don't match doesn't mean it's not exactly the same way. Um, file type identification is another part of the, the triage. Is this a PDF? Is this a, a, a Windows PE file? Is it a Linux ELF file? Um, PEID is good for detecting the compiler and we'll actually be using PEID uh, as well as it has some detection of uh, hackers that it is aware of. Um, entropy analysis, which again we'll get into. Um, your very basic strings, you know, what are the strings of the binary? And we saw that in the intro course. Just looking at the strings can sometimes help you figure out uh, what you need to get it to run or where malware is calling back to. Um, custom signature tools such as Clam AV and Yara definitely suggest using those. You can create your own rules to say, hey, I've seen something like this before. If you, if you come across malware that has a really unique function in it um, or a really unique packer that the other tools don't detect. Um, and then your, your kind of static header analysis of, as well as dynamic analysis, the, the automation of that can, can help a lot as well with your triage. The question about what Clam and Yara do, um, the, does Yara do network and uh, disk or just one of them? And then same question for Clam AV. What do you mean? Does what, it do? What is it, what is it scan? It, you give it a blob of bytes and it scans that. Okay, for, for both of them? For both of what? For, for both Clam AV and Yara? Yeah. So one of the things that you can, you can get pretty complicated signatures with Yara where you can actually say, um, you know, in terms of the PE file, is it at the entry point? So it kind of knows something about the PE file format. But it doesn't assume that for the signatures. Okay. So you can write signatures that assume that, but you can also write signatures that just look for this string of, of bytes wherever in, in the blob of data that I'm giving. So, so if you have a, uh, a bunch of PCAP, it'll just literally look for that string of bytes in the PCAP. It won't say, oh, this looks like TCP, so I'm going to reconstruct it. I don't believe, so I know Yara is aware of the PE file format. I don't believe it is PCAP file format aware. Uh, I'd have to double check the most recent documentation for it, but I, I don't believe that it is PCAP aware specifically. Um, having said that, MITRE open sourced a tool that you can use to um, process PCAP data with Yara and you GitHub slash MITRE CND and it's, it's off of there. 